In this lesson or in this video, I'm going to go over some of the things that we've previously talked about when it comes to the income statement, the balance sheet, and some of the ratios that I find or that I feel that you really need to know when it comes to investing and looking at a company's financials. Um, these are things that can gauge whether or not your investment is safe, its margin of safety, like we discussed the debt to, um, or not debt to equity, but price to book value is the equity within the company. So as, uh, let's, let's recap, if a company was to say it was needing to go out of business, and it was to liquidate everything into cash and take care of its uh, liabilities with its assets or cover, basically turn its assets into cash and sell off some of the things and, to, and basically cover its liabilities and take care of those, then that's gonna provide you with the book value, the actual value that's on the books within the balance sheet. So in this lesson, I'm gonna show you simply going to msn.com and there's other websites that I like to use, but MSN.com is one of them. And these will provide you with the overview of the financials, the income statement, the cash flow, um, and the balance sheet. So once we're in MSN.com, you'll go down here to this tab right uh, in this section, and you'll click on money. And in this case, we're going to look at Amazon. And you'll type in the, the ticker that you know, or you can literally begin typing them, and it will actually give you the ticker. So we're going to check out Amazon, and today it closed out at 1641. So for one share, in order to buy one share of Amazon, you would have to um, pay out $1,641.09, or give or take, depending on what the next uh, or what the seller, um, what seller you find and whatnot, you can find a little bit better price. But overall, the share price did close out at 1641 today. Um, so when we're in MSN money and we're in our favorite ticker or company that we want to analyze, we see that down here is our P-E ratio. And remember, P-E ratio is the price to earnings. So um, for every $81 that you spend, you will make $1. And that's because you have to understand that the price um, of Amazon is at $16.41. So if you was to break that down into individual basis and share basis, that would give you the P-E ratio. And also the earning, it also gives you the EPS right here is 2014. Um, so if you want to browse, you would go to or browse for the uh, income statements, the balance sheets, and the cash flow statements. You would go into the financials tab here. And as you can see, Amazon rising um, each year. And actually, this year it's just shy of $241 billion in revenue. And this is as December 31st, 2018. And the source came out at February 1st, 2019. And this is probably from the sec.gov website. Um, so they'll upload these on MSN Money and they'll provide these, the numbers for you guys. So Remember in the previous lesson or one of the lessons I discussed the income statement and that is you have the overall um, picture of the company and then you have Ted who is the coffee shop owner who is bringing all this cash in from its customers. It's flowing money into the business and then in, re in, in return that business has to pay employees, the cost of the building, its taxes and whatnot and what's left over is for Ted and that's the net income. Now Ted can either pay that out in dividends or put that money back into the company. And why, why companies pay out dividends is for the fact that sometimes they want to lure in investors. And I've seen a lot of companies in like Amazon, it, it's a wonder they're not doing it yet. And it's, it's, it's a shame because um, I think that they really need to by now, but they're at a point where they still feel like there's room to grow and they're still luring in all these investors. So there's really no need to pay out a dividend yet. Um, Companies like Coca-Cola, they've reached a certain threshold. So to entice more investors to keep coming in or staying into that company's investment, um, they, they will pay out dividends. So that's like bonuses for staying in and, and staying as an investor. So each quarter you get uh, a, a reoccurring revenue. So that's why companies primarily usually st uh, pay out dividends. But in this case, Amazon's not paying out a dividend, as you can see, and it hasn't in the last three years. Um, actually, four years. So... Anyways, we, we want to look at earnings per share, its book value, and some of the other things. Um, as we can scroll down, we see basic EPS and diluted EPS. Diluted EPS is if the company was to literally take out all of its marketable securities and all of its other um, investments and turn them into cash. And that would what that would actually do is raise the margin or raise that 
number of shares outstanding more and it would lower the EPS. So when you see a lower EPS than a ba or lower diluted EPS compared to its basic EPS, that's why because it, let's say it's it's just basically liquidated all of its investments and that's what theoret what technically would be the EP EPS. So just remember that. Um, some of the other things we can look at is in the analysis tab. We can see revenue, net income, market cap, and enterprise value. And remember, enterprise value is the cash minus the liabilities away from the market cap. The market cap is the shareholders or the number of shares outstanding times the stock price, and that gives you the overall value. But if a company was to come in right away and say, okay, we want to buy Amazon, the, the overall value, because you take in that cash and you can use that cash to pay off some of its liabilities, is, is $802 billion. Its net profit margin is 4 uh, 4 its price to earnings growth ratio is 2.02 its beta which is the its movement compared to the market if it's a one-to-one -one scale then it moves with the market price if it's 1.63 then as you can see it moves um, either way uh, a little bit more volatile um, forward pe is the forward price to expect or the expected price in the to the future of the pe ratio price of sales book value here's the book value price to cash flow and etc these are all ratios that investors like you and i get into and we look at um on a quick basis when we want to see uh, just numbers what they are and when you know what these um, de terms and definitions then you can quickly assess these companies and move on to the next or start looking into more okay well the book value is 88 point or yeah 88.6 and that Remember, I said in one of the previous lessons in the market or the uh, margin of safety, 88 is relatively high, but you still have Amazon as a growth stock. But anyways, you, as an investor, we look at these numbers and we can quickly assess what the company is doing. And if, we, if one of these numbers stick out to us, then we can go back to its financials and the cash flow statement, which is more of a detailed um, what the company does with its, its income and what it does with it ex, it, its expenses. Um, so that's when we would actually be enticed to look more in depth. So anyways, um, then there's the analysis tab. And as I said, I, I just explained this, <laughs> the analysis tab, we can quickly go down in this where we can even see more is debt to equity ratio, current ratio, quick ratio, leverage, book value per share. Remember, book value per share is broken down from shareholders equity compared to what it is on a per share basis. And over here, and you'll see this, it's compared to the industry average. So if the industry is 1348, and we know that the book value is a little bit more for Amazon, we might want to reconsider some of these other companies that are lower book value and just like the earnings per share. If the earnings per share um, is higher in Amazon than it is compared with the industry, we might want to start looking into companies that are within that industry that are actually a lower value so we have more for our money. So just remember that when you start looking at MSN Money or any other financial website that I, I share with you or you may find in the future. Um, so there's all kinds of things you can do with MSN Money. You can go to the growth tab here, find it sells quarter to quarter from last year, what it's done, compare those two, and and, and basically gain an insight as to whether or not the growth rate um, of Amazon is growing on a quarter to quarter basis or a year to date basis. Net income right here, um, net income quarter to quarter sales in a five year term, and so on and so on. The profitability. Um, is also where this gives you the percentage of its profitability if the gross margin is um, and its company and whether or not it's close re closely related you can understand whether or not Amazon is actually doing a decent job at its gross margins also its pre-tax income um, or pre-tax margin this shows you what their um, their before taxes what they're they're making compared to after taxes and it also too compares with the industry if that makes sense the net profit margin as you can see the industry actually has one percentage point one and a half a little bit over than than amazon not a bad thing you just have to actually understand how amazon works in this cases but for this overall view this msn money is powerful and there's one other website that i want to show you and that is the Guru Focus. I am an affiliate. I've said this in the past. Guru Focus is great. It's about 400 and some dollars a year, but it provides you with every single thing. It also helps you calculate these terms. So let's go to book, price to book value ratio being at an 18.5. And we can read that as of today, Amazon share price is 1641. Amazon's book value per share for the fiscal year that ended in December 18 was 8870. 
Hence, Amazon's price to book ratio of today is 1851. So it breaks it down for you to basically understand the two price to book value and also, or book value per share and also the price to book ratio. So if you scroll down here in this calculation area, it does show you how to come up with those numbers, which is great because you don't really have to refer to any other website. You can stay on Guru Focus, save time, and these are formula or these are the formulas for all of the ratios or any of the numbers that you've seen right here. So you can click on any of these and figure out how to calculate those. Um, so this is a great website, as you can see, to find the, the price to book ratio, it equals the share price divided by the book value per share, 88.7. And then down here, to find the price to book ratio, is the market cap divided by the shareholder's equity minus preferred stock. Okay, so you, you there's so many things you can do with Guru Focus. Um, you can compare them to all the other companies, the competitive uh, comparison data. Um, you can find return on equity, the return on capital, cash to debt ratios. I mean, it gives everything. It even gives you the intrinsic value of Amazon. So what we know about intrinsic value is the actual price discounted in the future for whatever many terms of years that you give it. If you wanna know the intrinsic value for the next five years, most people assume or formulate companies for about 10 years out. So if we know the intrinsic value is at, is at a higher price than the value of the stock today, then we know that that's a good investment. It's undervalued. If the intrinsic value is lower than the stock price, then guess what? We know that the actual value f f in, in about 10 years time frame or 10 years out is actually gonna be around that price. So should we buy it now? Well, right there, the intrinsic value, if it's higher than the current stock price, it's undervalued. If it's lower, then it's overvalued. So it's not, it wouldn't be a good investment. Um, so just keep that in mind as well. So as you can see, MSN Money, um, the Guru Focus website, I will provide you with my affiliate link. I hope you sign up or at least start signing up for it on the free version. And if you really want to get into it, it provides 30 years and all that. Um, but most of these things, uh, most of these financial websites that provide anywhere from five to 10 years for sure for free, it gives you a lot more for the subscription base, but what to get out of the free version, you can gain so much intel um, and, and, and very little um, needed knowledge on how to formulate stuff because it's all right here for you. So again, if there's anything that you might want covered, uh, drop them in the comments. If you find this video on YouTube, please subscribe. So I hope this video helped. Once again, if there's anything, please visit investingwithchris.com and contact me over Facebook, wherever. So until then, I'll see you in the next video.